Hi y'all, today I'm going to be reviewing Marissa Meyer's Heartless, her new book that just came out recently. Warning, I'm giving spoilers. So if you haven't read it and you don't want spoilers, you need to stop this video right now. I'm not gonna hold anything back. I want to be able to thoroughly discuss this, unlike Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. So if you don't want spoilers, stop watching. That's your final warning, okay? Okay, so um, I went to, um, Marissa Weyer was on her tour for this book and I got to go, she, com she came to Provo. So that was really cool. So I got to meet her again because I had forgotten this, my friend reminded me. I met her when Cinder came out. We had gone to that book tour as well and I totally forgot about that because at the time I didn't buy Cinder. But see, she signed it, woo, that's cool. Um, so Heartless is not part of the Cinder series. Same author, totally different. So this one takes place in the world of, well, it's basically Wonderland, right? But it's called, um, it's the Kingdom of Hearts, and the main character is a girl named Catherine. Catherine? I don't know. She goes by Kath. Um, and she is the daughter of, like, the gentry, basically. I'm trying to remember. I don't know. Anyway, she's up there in society, right? And her dream, though, is to open a bakery which you can't do, right? That's not, being a businesswoman is frowned upon. She's supposed to be this wife and marry up in the world, you know, things like that. So there's that conflict there. And um, the king has his eye on her um, and ultimately proposes. And so it's all the drama with that. Because while that's going on, she meets the brand new court jester and falls in love with him, right? If you've read this, which I'm hoping you have because I just spoiled a lot of it, then you should know all this. I'm just giving you a recap. His name is Jest. Wasn't impressed with the name. That's cool though. Um, I loved Jest. I thought he was charming. I thought he was funny. He was very adventurous, um, capable, can hold his own clearly. I liked him a lot. Um, Felt he was a little too perfect a couple of times. Whatever. Something I did love about Heartless was how well she world-builded without ever having to blatantly be like, this is where you are. Like, to the reader, this is where you are. Um, as I started it, I was kind of like, if I didn't realize that this was an Alice in Wonderland sort of thing, I might be confused. But she just did a really good job of, like, the different animals being nobility in this world and just walking around, doing their thing, wearing their suits, and the flamingos for croquet. I loved that whole croquet scene. I thought she did a very good job, um, specifically with the flamingos and the hedgehogs. That was very nicely done. Um, I toot my own horn here for a minute. I know that I have a good imagination, um, but I was able to picture this all in this whole thing very, very well. So I think obviously part of that is me because depending on where your imagination's at, it's gonna be harder, easier, whatever. But I also think that that is then credibility to Marissa because if she can't describe it well, then I'm gonna, you know what I mean? That's really kind of confusing and I hope I didn't insult anyone who couldn't picture it. Um, but I do think that she did a good job with her descriptions and her world building. I could imagine it, I could see myself there. And the way the unhuman creatures interacted with the human ones, like the whole thing was just very, very well done. Um, something that was interesting to me was the whole Peter Peter storyline because I teach preschool and we do the Peter Peter poem. We don't do all of what was in Heartless and I've since learned that that's even a, cause then I looked up the poem and she's got her own thing in Heartless with the one stanza that's pretty accurate, but then the real Peter Peter poem has other things going on as well. So in preschool we do Peter Peter pumpkin eater had a wife and couldn't keep her. He put her in a pumpkin shell and there he kept her very well. And in preschool, we've got, I don't actually love that we do this one, but that's something this preschool had instigated before I came along. And we've got a picture though of the little pumpkin house and his wife is smiling in the window. And so we tell the kids that he built her this cute little house and she's so happy. When really, when I looked up the poem, um, it said that one of the interpretations from when it was written originally was that his wife was, well, in the explanation, they say prostitute, but I don't know if that's accurate because if she was married, well, I guess she could still then be a prostitute, but it seemed like Peter didn't know at the beginning. So that's why I almost wonder if she's just like 
an unfaithful wife. But the word they used in the explanation, the interpretation was prostitute. And so Peter apparently gets annoyed with his wife. And some of the interpretations say that he killed his wife and then buried her in a pumpkin shell so that no one would find out. And others say that he imprisoned her in a pumpkin shell, but all because of this prostitution, right? So yikes. Um, but so that was fascinating to me that Marissa pulls in Peter, Peter. I kind of really liked that. Partly because I'm familiar with the poem. Um, and I love, I love what Marissa Meyer does. I love when people take stories that are well known and then twist things around. Um, even though the story, or even though the, I guess story, of telling the villains side of the thing is popular right now, I didn't get bored with Heartless. I felt like she did a very good job of carrying the story on. Um, and it gives you understanding without making what the Queen of Hearts does in the future acceptable. Because that's something that we've discussed in fairy tale classes that I've taken in college and stuff, was with all these interpretations of the villains, Wicked especially, that was kind of like the first big one, but then also Maleficent and some other things going on. Is it showing, is it portraying that being evil is okay as long as you've got a bad enough backstory? If you were abused, is it then okay to be an abuser? No, right? So that was something we talked about. We can't ever let it seem like things are okay. But in the case of Heartless, it gives you so much understanding. Um, and I still, like, it's not okay, but you can then see where she's coming from. But I felt like Marissa Meyer kept that line. Once Kath basically went insane with anger, um... You could tell, this is no longer okay, but this is this character that I love so much. I understand her. I've grown to know her. This is so tragic, right? Something that I'm not sure how I feel about is how quickly Kath went from happy Kath, I love Jest, stressed out about the king, to this angry Kath who is obsessed with revenge and vengeance. Um, so thinking about it, there were a couple of things because I'm trying to figure out if I think that that shift was too quick or if it led up appropriately. So something that stand out, stood out to me, um, if you think about, oh shoot, what is that lady's name? Her friend who's not actually her friend. Um, I can't remember, this is terrible. I just finished this like over the weekend and now I cannot remember her name. The friend who's not attractive, the friend, right? She, in the croquet scene, is freaking out and yelling at her hedgehogs and her flamingos. And me, being who I am, I was like, stop making a scene. Like, I'm a reader and you're embarrassing me. Like, I'm embarrassed for you because you're making this scene in croquet. And she, like, stomps off the croquet court, right? So that happened and I was like, what the heck? And a couple other things happen with other random little background characters who make scenes where I was like, maybe this is just okay in the kingdom of hearts like in our real world or at least my real world you don't yell and make a scene in public right like that's inappropriate but maybe in hearts it's different because there were enough side characters doing it that i was like okay maybe that's a thing maybe it's appropriate maybe people don't care um so then in kath's case in her transition from happy kath love jest whatever to angry bitter evil kath um when they are trying to get through the maze to the mirror and after they talk to the sisters, you can, well, with the sisters, you see her internally getting very angry and very frustrated. And then as they're going, she starts like yelling and freaking out and just is like, it's gonna be okay. And that's right before they have to go save Marianne at Peter Peters. But still, even though we're getting to that point, getting to the climax, getting to the horror, she still is already having these public freakouts and she like can no longer handle what's going on in her life, running away from everything, running away from the king and that life, trying to be with Jest, not getting along with, um, with Hatta, all these things. So she's already slipping. And then they get to Peter Peters and I think that that part maybe should have been slowed down. The transition between the maze where she's already freaking out about just getting through the maze and then choosing to go save Marianne. Oh, also the anger at Marianne about telling her parents her secret. That is another build up, another like adding, you know. Um, but in that transition, I think if that transition had been a little bit slower between maze and Peter's property, because I really think that's a huge turning point. She is telling Jess to stay and she'll find him. But I think 
in her heart of hearts, she knows that that would be so incredibly difficult. No one can get through that maze except for Hatta, that, or at least that's what's implied. And getting past the sisters alone, like she could not have done that again on her own. Um, so I think that she's maybe already sort of given up there, but won't admit it, obviously. So I wish that part had been slowed down a little bit. I did a, um, a huge paper on the Rapunzel story and how it's evolved over time. And something that I pointed out was in Tangled, when Eugene has been stabbed by Mother Gothel and he's bleeding to death, Rapunzel says, let me heal him and I'll go with you to Mother Gothel, right? So she's willing to give up her future of freedom just to save his life um, and not be with him. And then in turn, after Mother Gothel finally agrees, Mother Gothel chains him up, which then means he's not even going to escape. He could starve to death and Rapunzel is still willing to give up everything for him. Um, all her freedom and whatever, even though then he's just going to starve in the tower. But then he chops off her hair, which is basically saying, I am willing to give you a chance at freedom. He doesn't know what's going to happen to Mother Gothel. And he's willing to then die just for her chance at freedom because he thinks that then it'll lose the healing. So with all of that, that is what Kath's, Kath's situation reminded me of when she's like, I've got to go save Marianne. I will try to find you. There's like this, I have no idea what the future holds, but I am still going to do this thing because I love and I care and I have friends and I'm loyal and you know, on and on and on. All these great qualities that Kath has or equally Rapunzel and Eugene have, um, where they are willing to risk their future to do the right thing, basically. So that kind of reminded me of that, but I think that Kath knows that it's bleak and I wish, wish that Marissa had slowed that little bit down a little bit so that readers would catch on to how drastic that decision was. And then of course we know the scene at Peter's. Um, I hope you knew before getting into this book that it would end tragically. Otherwise I personally would have had a really hard time. So I'm glad that I knew it was gonna be tragic. Um, I like happy endings. So, but I wasn't surprised when Peter killed Jest. That didn't shock me. I saw it coming. Not a head ahead. Like when the sisters made their creepy prophecies, I still thought it was going to be Raven. Like it seems like in the prophecy. And I was like, what in the heck? What sort of plot twist is going to happen here? That's so weird. They're good friends. But then as we got closer, I was like, Peter's going to kill Jest. So I kind of saw it coming. I thought it was interesting that Kath just was angry. There wasn't grief. There wasn't denial. Well, of course there was grief. Like we know that she cried and cried and cried in her bedroom. But initially, right when he's dead, she doesn't gasp and crumble to the ground. It's immediately anger, bring him back. I'm going to kill you to Peter. I'm going to get revenge, blah, 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 blah. That was interesting to me. And so that's why I'm not positive that I believe in her transition from version to version. And of course, that's why then I'm trying to point out the different things that happened to get her to that point. Um, yeah, then once she was evil, I was kind of just ready for the story to wrap up and I felt like it dragged on a bit. I liked that the sisters took her heart. Um, I thought that was interesting. It just seemed to fit so nicely. Um, and you can just see, like with the ending scene of when she tells them to kill Peter and how easily she can boss around the king and the court and the kingdom, it just makes sense for then who she becomes. Because if they're that cowardly, which we've seen consistently throughout the whole book, so that was definitely accurate and made sense. Um, but if they're that cowardly and that much of pushovers, then... The Queen of Hearts that we all know from the typical Alice in Wonderland story totally makes sense. Marissa Meyer nailed her backstory in that case because she's gone crazy with grief and anger and she already had a ridiculous life where she couldn't make her dreams come true and her parents were kind of stifling. Um, and we don't know how old she is, but I'm guessing only like 16. Maybe Marissa says it in here and I totally missed it. I usually notice things like that though, but I could be missing it. Maybe I missed it. But my guess is she's like 16. Think of you at 16. Would you want to get married? Would you want to let go of all your dreams of like a bakery or your lifestyle? Would you want to leave home? Like on and on and on. It's, 
ah, it'd be so stressful. And so I think after now that I've been talking it out in this review, I do think that Kath's transition makes sense. I do think it's a little too quick. I wish there had been a few more instabilities in her personality before because she snaps hard. And she snaps hard before her heart is even then taken out. Because, of course, without her heart, I feel like it makes more sense that she's so, so evil. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't really know what I'm trying to say right here. I liked the book a lot. I love, I like the way Marissa Meyer writes. Um, I think she does a very nice job. I liked all the characters. Um, I love that she pulled in and Allan Poe references and even Shakespeare references. Those cracked me up. I thought that was very cleverly done. Um, the mock turtle soup thing, the mock turtle broke my heart. That was so sad. I love when people pull in the Jabberwocky. I thought it was interesting that she just shortened it to Jabberwock. Um, she just tied in a bunch of things that no one's tied in before and it was very well done. It was good. I liked it. I liked it. Let's just leave it at that. There you go. That's Heartless by Marissa Meyer. I like her a lot. Keep watching for her stuff. At the tour, she said she's doing a graphic novel about um, Eco in her Cinder series. And I'm thrilled to see that because I really like Eco. And for the record, Eco is how Marissa Meyer said it. So that's apparently how we pronounce it. I've heard that that's not the way it's said on the books on tape. But there you go. So... I enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed this review. Um, leave some comments or something. Tell me what you thought. I, I would love to have discussions about this. That's kind of what I'm about. So there you go. Keep reading.